Morning folks, it's Friday the 1st of March. Right, not too much to report today, uh, certainly not as far as the dollar goes. It's just uh, holding mostly within yesterday's range. We've got an outside day, but uh, I'm still waiting for a test of this support down here, which which might well hold the first time it's tested. This is down at 95.65, 95.55, uh, absolutely key. So let's just wait and see what happens with that one. My big trades for the week were being short gold and short silver, which is now working really, really nicely. We finally broke the, um, I did actually say that the 2019 area would be a good support level. And if you look on the hourly chart, I do believe we got to, uh, we dipped as far as, nearly as far as 16, not enough to stop out of any longs. So if you did scalp that level, like I suggested, I didn't, I'm just happy to hold the short. But if you did, if you did scalp it, there was a decent uh, profit potential. We bounced up to 1327. And I did say if we get anywhere near 13, 30 uh, get out get short well we got to 1327 um, hopefully enough of a scalping profit if you did tackle that trade and if not I hope you hope you got short or um, I did suggest keeping the core short position because I did expect us to break that level eventually so we've been down as far as I think 13 uh, 13 12 we've been to okay just having a look at that for the first time uh, I'm still short I'm looking for a break now below 11 to target 13.04, 13.02, probably would be wise to take some shorts off there. I still think gold will go further, but I think we'll first, I think first we'll have a bounce from 13.04, 13.02, could could easily get back up to 13.18, 13.19 actually, so there would be potential 15 points profit in that trade, and I would most certainly be getting short on a bounce to 13.18, 13.19. Uh, silver's also been a dream. I don't need to tell you the reasons why we sold that, but uh, well, actually, if you're a, if you followed the written reports, you would have known that we had a selling opportunity at 16.20, 16.25. So if anyone got short up there, that's even nicer. Uh, we did get to 16.21. Okay, so we're going lower as expected. We should all be short. We should be making some really nice money this week on the short gold, short silver trades. Um, you can see that we're now heading towards. Hang on a second. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, one month trend line right here, this one. Uh, we've just broken it yesterday, so that looks good. We're testing the lower end of the Bollinger Band. I wouldn't worry too much about that. The Bollinger Bands will widen out as uh, if we continue lower. So there's no reason why we cannot get to 1530, 1520, 1530, 1535, 1530 is my target for this. Probably worth taking some profit there. That would have been a really good move. Uh, and if you keep a little bit of a short on, you're looking to take the rest of the profit around 15, 15, 15, 05. I would, I think that'll hold for now, and uh, maybe we can sell it again on any bounce. But that would, that would be enough profit if we, if we get out in the teen area, in the 15 teens area. Aussie dollar, well, this is dull. Uh, down, up for three days, retest the highs, down, retest the lows. You know, sideways trend. What do you, what do you want to do? I can't tell you. Uh, I have no idea where this is going. We could break lower. We've got a very, very minor trend line oh, whoops we've got a very minor trend line here okay so if we if we break that we go lower I mean this is this is just wishy-washy nothing isn't it this is not, no, there's nothing really interesting to, to look at here try and put short-term trend on forget that move on same with the New Zealand dollar I'm not even going to bother to show you the chart you don't need me to tell you that a market is moving sideways and how to trade that but the dollar yen is more interesting we've just hit the 200 day moving average and 100 day moving average both at around 11 11:30 so this this is a big test we're also testing the upper end of the the upper boundary of the Bollinger band this will be the big big test for today I guess it is worth being short I thought yesterday we would turn lower and I did actually sell into a short and got stopped on that. It was only a small amount of money, but still it was a losing trade. Right, there's some fibs on there. Um, if we turn lower, we've got a little bit of divergence here as well on the stochastics. Note how this the, the previous peak is higher than where we're peaking now. So it's not the biggest sell signal, but it's worth paying attention to. Just check in the weekly chart. No, there's nothing on the weekly chart. And as I'm just looking at the four hour charts and no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so it really is a case of do these moving averages hold? And if so, it's worth, worth trying a short at 11.30, 11.40. You can stop above, say, 11.55. It's a really small risk for a decent potential reward. I just want to scrunch this chart up. Look, the, the blue 100 day moving average really did a great job of support here. Uh, this was May 2018. Uh, it did a pretty good job here in August 2018. 
Uh, again, September, perfect. October, pretty perfect. Uh, middle of November, we didn't quite touch it. Beginning of December, we held it. So, that, you know, the 100 day moving average really does work in this pair. So it is worth paying attention to, and it would be worth a short, as I say. Give it a 20 pip stop, no big deal. On the downside, we'd be looking at, um, you, know, you could easily be nicking 100 pips out of that trade quite quickly. So the risk reward really does work. Euro, I got stopped on my shorts, so, and I've no idea what the euro is going to do. So I'm not even going to look at that chart. Right. Um, the US dollar versus the Swedish krona has been a real, has, well, it's been some fun lately. Um, yesterday, we had support at around 13.22, 13.20, uh, sorry, 9.22, 9.20. I suggested getting into a long there. This was tricky because I said below 18, we probably want to be out. Now, it dipped as far as 16.5. Uh, to be fair, I was buying it. I was, I bought it uh, just a little bit below there. And I was going to buy some more down here, but never quite got there. Anyway, we've had a strong bounce. I hope you did get in. I hope you didn't get stopped out. That's all I can say. Maybe I was trying to fine tune it too much, but this looks good. This looks like we should finally take off from this wedge pattern and, and go for it. So if you are long and you managed to hold on to the long, well done. That you know it was the idea, and although it was a little bit tricky, I think this trade will work. Uh, as I say, I am holding a long. What do we need to do? We need to get through. So we've bounced to the 100 hour moving average. Yeah, I can actually show you that. Why don't I just show you that? No, it's not. It's the 500 hour moving average. It's the green line. So it is pretty significant. There we go. Scrunch it up. It's significant. It's, it's not a, a trading level, but it's it's something to notice. If we can just get up through 925, 926 is the is the 38.2% fib on the hourly chart. Minor, minor levels, but these, this just gives you an idea. When, once we get up through 926, we're looking good again. So if we, we might just pause at 925, 926. Right, pound versus the Swiss. We made some really nice money on the run up, and I said to you the target would be 1330, 200 week moving average. Very simple idea, just to get out, on, just to get out as we hit the um, 200 week moving average, take the profit. Really nice profit. There's a probably 300 pips in that trade or more. Uh, and bang, look at that, 133.32. Uh, it doesn't get more accurate than that. So hopefully you um, had some longs. Hopefully you're out of those. You've made a really nice profit on that over the last couple of weeks. We've now got a bearish engulfing candle. So this is a very negative signal. We're uh, not significantly overbought, but we're overbought. So a correction looks like on the cars. Well, it's already happening, isn't it? Um, but you don't mind because you're out of your longs and you're waiting to get back in. We have a little bit of support here from the 38.2% fib, sorry, 23.6% fib at 132.18. And you can see that is working. We dipped a little bit just as far as this trend line, which is only uh, two weeks old, and that held. So we've got obvious support around 132.18 down to 131.95, 100 hour moving average. This little band here could hold. It's a bit risky to hold a, uh, uh, to, to, to put a long position on here after that bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart. That is more significant than this support. But uh, we're pausing here. Uh, I wouldn't try a long. I think that a break below 131.90 will then send us down to, let me just have a look at my four hour chart. Uh, 131.48. Yeah, it'll it'll send us down to around 131.50, 130. This 200 hour moving average will be a little bit higher. So I quite fancy along around 131.50, 131.30 um, and see if the longer term bullishness will continue. I think it will. So let's see if we can drop another 80 pips and jump into a long on the pound versus the Swiss. Crude oil, I don't really have any strong feelings on it, but we've made a really good recovery um, after our little short position here. Now we're above the 500 day moving average and we're above the 100 day moving average. So that has to be positive. Um, sitting well above the 38.2% fib at 55.60. We're not significantly overbought. So there's no downside pressure coming from there. We are above the 100 week moving average on the April contract as well, which is around $57. So we're just sitting slightly above there. And this is a pretty good candle with a long, long lower wick showing that buyers really came in and pushed this up. Uh, so things look alright for oil. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be short. Quick look at the hourly chart. Not telling us an awful lot. There's no, there's no short-term pattern here. There's no head and shoulders or anything telling me that we need to be short of it. So uh, my best guess is this, is this goes higher, but I don't have a position and I'm not. Uh, you know, I don't have any strong convictions on it, so I'm not going to trade it. But just showing you.
Okay, that's it. Friday, don't go mad. I think we've had a good week. I think we've had some winning positions on um, certainly on the pound Swiss and gold and silver. Uh, still running gold and silver shorts. I think that goes lower. Um, don't go and blow all your money on Friday. Um, maybe just stick to those positions, keep it tight, and we'll start again on Monday.